So here is the apparatus. We have already described it. This is the plate from which uh, the photoelectric effect will take place. And from the source L, light is coming. This E is counter plate. This uh, U is the plate from where we expect this photoelectric effect. And that is uh, placed at sudden potential that you can control from here. And then this is opposite plate, another metal plate. And potential of this can also be controlled from outside. So you can create a pot positive or negative potential difference whatever you like here then uh, this metal plate has a hole and in front of this uh, cathode let me call it cathode and then from here if something is uh, going and going this way straight it falls on this alpha there is another plate alpha metallic plate alpha and this is connected to an electrometer electrometer is uh, some kind of a simple device where charge falls on the electrometer plate and how much charge is falling that can be measured right that can be quantitatively measured so in uh, how much time how much charge has been uh, measured here that tells me the kind of current received now this is another uh, similar uh, metal beta electrode you can say and this is connected to another electrometer so this is the setup now when this uh, light is put on what it seen right so if uh, suppose this is uh, at neutral potential so these two potentials are equal or or it is slightly more negative than this then what will happen what uh, what it seen in the experiment of linard this is 1902 that this experiment is uh, is done and reported so you have a kind of charge which is deposited here and you can measure how much is that charge in how much time so Leonard had uh, studied that and then if uh, if they put some coils here outside and create a magnetic field those magnetic fields can deflect this uh, beam the beam which is coming that can be deflected by putting some magnetic field here using coils or so and uh, the value of the field is adjusted so that this beam goes and falls on this beta and there also you can measure how much charge is there and you know that okay whatever charge was uh, coming here now it is going there so this uh, beam when this light is on, some kind of a charged beam comes out and that charged beam normally goes straight but using magnetic field you can deflect it. And how much magnetic field is needed to deflect uh, it from, the, from going uh, in this state path reaching beta. Okay. So from that one can make calculations and Leonard did all these calculations and found that the charge by mass ratio if, uh, if, if you consider this to have uh, mass massive particles having mass right and charge of course then this charge and mass ratio E by M that can be calculated and that matches with what uh, J.J. Thompson had done for cathode rays since 1897. So it is established that this is same cathode rays. The ultraviolet light emits from uh, this cathode or this metal plate the same kind of cathode rays which were which were generated when uh, in the vacuum tube you have a cathode and you know, some 30,000 volts so you apply and put some gas in that vacuum tube at the appropriate pressure and then create some negative charged beam so that cathode ray beam and this beam are identical that was established from this experiment so that was one result now the other result was uh, variation with this voltage variation with this voltage suppose uh, it is going and falling here 
and then you change the voltage. Okay, this is the negative quarters are coming in, and therefore, if you put a negative voltage here as compared to this, with reference to you, if you put a negative voltage here, then uh, this uh, charge will be repelled, and if you increase that negative voltage in magnitude then uh, this uh, repulsion will be stronger and stronger and at a certain stage you find that all right there is no current reaching here the entire thing which is emitted from here is uh, going back just like if you throw something up and because of gravity it comes back similarly from here the, the cathode rays are ejected but then because of this negative plate here the force back to go on this uh, U and not reach here. So that was the kind of stopping potential. Okay. So again if you consider in terms of mass and uh, velocity then the maximum kinetic energy of those, those particles will be equal to that uh, uh, E times that potential difference and the same idea of stopping potential was there. So that maximum kinetic energy and therefore the maximum speed is related to that particular potential, negative potential, which stops all the current here. Right? Now, the, the observation is, the first observation that Lenard writes from his uh, experiment is, one is this of course, he establishes that this is the same as the cathode rays of J.C. Thompson. And then the next one is that uh, only few volts, few volts of negative potential is sufficient to stop all the, all the current here. And therefore, whatever is ejected, that is ejected, the cathode rays are ejected with very small velocity. That is uh, the conclusion. In the vacuum tube, in the normal vacuum tube, discharge tube, Right? The voltages applied are some tens of thousands of volts and therefore even if you make some aluminium window and take out those cathode rays, those cathode rays will be high velocity cathode rays because they have been accelerated by those tens of thousands of volts inside that uh, chamber and then these cathode rays are coming out. But here, here the cathode rays which are there they are emitted with a very small velocity and with the same velocity you can uh, we can change only a little bit of it right so a little bit of it if you wish if you, you wish you can uh, put your potentials in appropriate fashion and then uh, the velocity can be adjusted according to your will you can get slow cathode rays Okay, slow cathode rays. If you don't apply any potential difference here, then whatever is ejected, that's the same velocity it will go. Of course, there will be complications of a charge being accumulated here and uh, uh, that negative charge itself will start repelling the, the new covers. So th those things will be there, but uh, nevertheless, you can accelerate with a whatever volt you want, 100 volt if you want 100 volt, yes. 50 volts, yes. 20 volts, yes. 1000 volts, yes. So in uh, the normal cathode ray tube, the constraint is that whole thing fires only when you apply tens of thousands of volts. So you always get fast cathode rays. But uh, here you can uh, make a window here, aluminum window and take out these cathode rays and that could be slow cathode rays and the velocities of those uh, can be tuned by playing with this potential. So those are kind of uh, advantages uh, that uh, Leonard talks about this. As far as the measurement goes, he has uh, a most important observation hmm, quantitatively that he changes the intensity of this UV light. He changes the intensity of this UV light and to make that change in intensity is not very difficult to just uh, change the distance of this lamp, the source from this window and therefore from this cathode. So if you take it away, 
the intensity will be lower if you take it closer the intensity will be more and uh, you can do all that uh, inverse square thing and so on so forth so from the distance you can you can uh, sort of compare intensities what is the intensity now and if i take this uh, lamp here what will be the intensity so from the distances you can uh, make those comparisons so i can be varied the intensity can be varied and then he finds that then he finds that the velocity of those cathode rays coming out which is measured by this potential the negative potential which is applied here the negative potential which is enough to repel even the fastest part of that cathode ray okay so that is the measure of uh, the velocity with which these cathode rays are coming at least that uh, maximum velocity and that he finds that this uh, this velocity we talk in terms of velocity now it is we talk in terms of kinetic energy so velocity of cathode rays i am not writing electrons okay so in fact uh, lenard uses the word uh, quanta quanta of electricity right thomson uses the word corpuscles he uses the word quanta and uh, finally the accepted word is electron all right so velocity of these quanta is independent of is independent of intensity of uv so this is a, a very very important result and uh, that creates lot of uh, speculations because this is uh, uh, 1902 and the wave theory was uh, very well established we will talk more about this wave theory and uh, uh, things uh, related to light after this lecture perhaps and uh, but then uh, the wave theory was uh, very strongly Uh, was established there and then uh, this particular result was very very surprising to lenard and lenard interprets it uh, in a in a very innovative fashion which finally does not uh, stand but uh, this interpretation was really nice i liked it and history says that that was accepted by the physics community for uh, about a decade or so right and what was that the mechanism he thought since it is independent of its intensity of light even if i am putting more energy per unit time on this uh, material even then the electrons or the quanta are coming out or the cathode ray is coming out with same velocity all right so he concludes that the quanta are not receiving energy from the light at all okay the mechanism of these quanta being liberated from the atom and the quanta are coming out so in this process the light is not giving its energy to the quanta quanta does not need the energy of the light because if uh, this uh, light energy is transferred to the quanta to come out then more intensity means more energy and more energy means the quanta should come out with a larger energy so since for all intensities for all intensities the quanta are coming out with the same velocity this tells me that the quanta are coming out not by taking the energy of the light the quanta themselves are having that energy as a part of that material as a part of that atom these quanta have some kind of energy they are vibrating or they are uh, doing some kind of oscillations and some energy is there and uh, different atoms and different quanta have different kinds of energy 
uh, in, in in its uh, normal state in the metal and the only thing is when light comes with certain energy and if that light which is established as electromagnetic wave it has oscillating electric field and magnetic field so if that uh, frequency of vibrations of electric field and magnetic field and frequency of vibration of those quanta inside that atom if uh, that matches some kind of resonance takes place and then uh, the quanta start uh, vibrating uh, more violently and then they are able to come out but the energy is already there that the was already there they were oscillating there with some energy the light is only triggering those quanta with appropriate energy which are uh, resonating with the the light frequency to come out of this metal so this was called triggering hypothesis okay so because of that the conclusion very very important conclusion that he derived that uh, these quanta are not taking energy from the uv light they already have energy or they use their own energy in the atoms or molecules and light only triggers them to escape okay so this was the conclusion uh, that lenard draws from from this uh, observation and uh, another observation is that uh, if you increase this voltage if you increase this voltage finally it goes to a saturation current so that is understandable because uh, once the these quanta or electrons which we call it today electrons if they come out from here and then if this uh, this uh, potential is not high then some of the them will just uh, make a charge here and they will stay here some will go in straight directions but then if you do have some kind of positive positive potential then it draws them and if you have sufficiently high then all the quanta which are emitted if all of them uh, go through this not all of them they are of course blocked here and there but uh, there is no no side going in this side or that side and so on so they are all streamed in a direction so you get a maximum current so that saturation current is necessary so all that variation of i with the variation of this current here as a function of this voltage that also he he knows that oh, okay this kind of so this kind of things is measured this kind of things is measured and a lot of theory is developed from here so that is all derived from from this lenard does not does not quantitatively explores the dependence of this uh, Uh, this current on frequency or this maximum velocity on frequency so that was uh, uh, not on the agenda although he says that okay if you change the the, the slab material in the slab that uh, changes the characteristics but uh, that frequency relationship or or giving a monochromatic light of sudden frequency those things were not part of this linard's experiment now the uh, i should mention i should mention that uh, in 1900 in that period when these experiments were done lenard was uh, almost sure that these are not the, the normal particles 
these are still he thought that it's something like that ultraviolet radiation so this is charged fine the, the there are quanta fine it behaves like particles it behaves like particles but he had a conviction that these are essentially not uh, material particles as such but these are some kind of radiation so so that also i should mention there's a lot of uh, discussion and theory in his paper that we will not go into that at present